Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and a new Superman actor is imminent. According to a recent report that listed David Cornswit from Pearl and the Politician is in the running for kal Clark Kent in the upcoming Superman Legacy film. This along with Nicholas Holt in talks to play Lex Luthor and Emma Mackey or Rachel Brosnahan in talks for Lois Lane. Nothing has been confirmed or locked in yet, this is all just still speculative. But since Superman Legacy will be the first of James Gunn's DC Gods and Monsters slate, and a number of fans are still sore over the parting of ways with Henry Cavill from the Zack Snyder era, this is one of the most important casting decisions Warner Brothers has faced in years. And whenever these casting reports start to bubble up online, there are a lot of knee-jerk responses based on how an actor looks or their reputation for past roles, and there's just not enough insight into how the Hollywood casting process actually works. In this case, James Gunn and the studio seem to be looking back at the casting of Christopher Reeve in Richard Donner's 1978 Superman the movie, and why that worked so well, and how this should be less based on looks than on another quality. Is it Acting? Is it America? Is it being someone's son? Is it saying yes to Brian Singer? Ugh. So on Saturday, May 13th, The Hollywood Reporter published that according to multiple sources, the shortlist for Superman and Superman Legacy includes David Cornswit from The Pearl and The Politician on Netflix, along with two other unknown contenders. Now, Jacob Alordi, who plays Nate Jacobs on Euphoria, did come up in this article, but apparently he never submitted himself for the role. British actors Tom Brittany and Andrew Richardson were also in the early mix. Now, there's a belief that they might want an American actor for Clark Kent, as every actor to play Superman other than Henry Cavill has been American, even though, of course, the character is is an extraterrestrial from Krypton. Actually, back in 2019, David Kurtzwood told Entertainment Weekly about how he had previously had his looks compared to Henry Cavill, saying, it came to my attention before the internet got a hold of me, but my pie in the sky ambition is definitely to play Superman. I would love to see somebody do an upbeat throwback take on Superman. Love the Henry Cavill dark and gritty take. I would love to see the next one be very bright and optimistic. Now, this same article reports that the studio has earmarked Nicholas Holt to play Lex Luthor, known, of course, for playing Hank McCoy in the later X-Men films and roles in Renfield, The Menu, The Great. He's been in a ton of stuff. Warner Brothers was reportedly impressed with his work as Nux in Mad Max Fury Road and nearly cast him in Matt Reeves' The Batman, but he lost the role to Robert Pattinson. For the role of Lois Lane, this article lists Emma Mackey from Netflix's Sex Education in the upcoming Barbie film, Bridgerton actress Phoebe Denever, and Samara Weaving from Ready or Not and Scream 6. But the standout audition apparently came from Rachel Brosnahan from The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, an amazing actress who seemed to be playing coy when The View asked her about this recently. The article says that some sources say she's too old for the role, but she's 32 and David Cornswood is 29. Why would that be a problem? Come on, Hollywood. Now, writer-director James Gunn tweeted, for all of you asking, I would never comment on who is or isn't auditioning for a role. That's the actor's business only and isn't something I'd make public unless they did it first after the fact, like Lynn Howerton or Zachary Levi having auditioned for Star-Lord and being top choices. For now, only one person has been cast in Superman Legacy and it isn't any of the regular players in the Superman world. And he ends with a mermaid emoji, which is many wondering if he has cast the character of Lori Lamaris, Clark's past girlfriend from Metropolis University, who uses a wheelchair and a blanket to hide her mermaid tail, coming from a different kingdom in the continent of Atlantis. The Hollywood Reporter article also said that there would be a screen test around Memorial Day or early June that will lock in the final choices. And some are now looking at David Cordswin and commenting on his similar appearance to Henry Cavill for suggesting he might need to put on some more muscle. You know, all the great stuff people say when actors are announced for these roles. But the deeper story here is Cordswin's background in the general approach James Gunn in the studio seem to be taking with Superman Legacy. Recently, James Gunn went on GQ and broke down his top comic book movies, and he listed, at number two, Richard Donner's 1978 Superman the movie. You know, at the time, they did exactly what we're doing now. They're going through tons and tons of actors to see who captures that spirit. The thing they don't talk about much when they talk about Christopher Reed, they talk about his pureness, his hope, his goodness. They talk about, you know, the way that he plays Clark as being so different from the way he plays Superman and how he can turn that on in an instant. But there's this playfulness about Superman. This When he's saving a cat, he's got that wry smile. Awesome. Bye, Frisky. Long now. And that is one of the best parts of the movie is the playfulness of Superman. He enjoys what he's doing. He likes helping human beings and he likes saving them. This definitely follows the little bit of information James Gunn has so far told us about his plan for Superman Legacy. A plot synopsis has said the movie will tell, quote, the story of Superman's journey to reconcile his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing as Clark Kent of Smallville, Kansas. He is the embodiment of truth, justice in the American way, guided by human kindness in a world that sees kindness as old fashioned. And Gunn has tweeted that he decided 
decided to write and direct the project himself after turning it down only after losing his father, who didn't understand him as a kid but supported his love of comics and film, and that he found a way in by quote centering around Superman's heritage, how both his aristocratic Kryptonian parents and his Kansas farmer parents inform who he is and the choices he makes. New Rockstars is doing an in-person live show. Most of us have a background in improv sketch and stand-up, and we've been working behind the scenes for a long time to develop a live New Rockstars show, and now we're super excited to share it with the world. We've done panels at Comic-Cons and live streamed on YouTube, but this is a whole new ball game, the kind of show we've always wanted to do. On May 26th in Los Angeles, myself, Tommy, Jessica, and the New Rockstars crew are gonna escape the Blue Dungeon and get on stage in front of an in-person audience. There's gonna be special guests, ridiculous comedy bits, and exclusive videos that we can never show on YouTube. It's live theater on a multiversal level. The in-person tickets for the event sold out. So we are also streaming the show as a worldwide digital experience with our partners at Moment. That link is also in the description. This is something we hope to be doing a lot more of in the future, so leave a comment if you'd like us to try to come to your city. Now, I have very much enjoyed the takes on Superman by Henry Cavill and by Tyler Hecklin on the CW shows. Hecklin didn't have to audition for the role. He proved himself to Greg Berlanti from the role he played on Teen Wolf on the CW, and he had a background as a youth actor. He played college baseball, and you might remember it was Tom Hanks' son in Road to Perdition. Henry Cavill's story is also very interesting. He was actually attached to play Superman in the planned 2004 film Superman Flyby from director McG, but McG backed out, and the project was given to Brian Singer and became Superman Returns, and Singer recast Cavill with Brandon Ruth. But Cavill's name had floated around Warner Brothers for years in the early aughts. He actually auditioned to play Batman in Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins. Cavill's background, we should note, was also as an athlete. He played rugby at the UK school Stowe, where at age 16, he actually met Russell Crowe, who shot the film Proof of Life at that school. Russell Crowe would go on to play his Kryptonian father, Jor-El, in Man of Steel. But Cavill, despite his many talents, is very much a product of his time when it comes to his superhero roles, because superhero actors have been expected to be absolute units. And lost are the days of Christopher Reeve and Michael Keaton, with that kind of aw shucks charm and the playfulness, Boy Scout wholesomeness, and the physical clumsiness of Clark Kent that Christopher Reeve definitely portrayed, but but was downplayed in Zack Snyder's vision of this character in this world. I mean, let's be honest, the real star of the Snyderverse has always been Zack Snyder himself, and the storyboarding, and the frame rate, and the color grading that he shoots these characters in. Don't get me wrong, I think Zack Snyder's a visual genius, and I'll watch everything he makes, but I think he is the star of everything he makes. But look back at Christopher Reeve and his background. Christopher Reeve was a Juilliard-trained stage actor. He was actually roommates with Robin Williams. Christopher Reeve ate poorly. He actually fainted on the opening night of a Broadway play, A Matter of Gravity, but thanks to part to mentorship from Katherine Hepburn and casting director Lynn Stallmaster, he got a meeting with Richard Donner. And he later told a biographer, quote, by the late 1970s, the masculine image had changed. Now it was acceptable for a man to show gentleness and vulnerability. I felt that the new Superman ought to reflect that contemporary male image. And that got him the part. He did later get in shape with Star Wars actor David Prowse to bulk up, but he never got into insanely shredded bodybuilder shape. And it's just sad that since then, Hollywood has totally reverted back to that macho norm where everyone has to be a bodybuilder. In fact, one of my favorite moments from Christopher Reeve was a 1982 appearance on Late Night with David Letterman, where Letterman asked him about working with Marlon Brando, and he went off on his co-star, lamenting that Marlon Brando used to be a Hollywood acting legend, a leader of their community, but began phoning it in at this point in his career. I I must say, I don't, I don't say this to be vicious, but I don't worship at the altar of Marlon Brando because I feel that he's, he's copped out in a certain way. He's no longer in the leadership position that he could be. He could really be inspiring a whole generation of actors and by continuing to work. But what happened is the press loved him, whether he was good, bad, or indifferent, mm -hmm. where people thought he was this sort of institution no matter what he did. So he doesn't care anymore. And I just think it would be sad to be 53, whatever he is, and not give a damn, that's all. I just think it's too bad that the man has kind of been forced into that hostility. Um, that's, but you wouldn't. Well, he's here tonight, Chris. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I mean, there's definitely a Superman-esque quality there. Here's a guy speaking some truth in a way that you never see on late night TV now, where you never say anything bad about anyone, but he does it in a way that rightly blames the ecosystem of Hollywood, and he begs his acting hero to prove himself again, take back the torch and lead the way. Similarly, we should look at the real life heroism and struggles of George Reeves, who played Superman in the 1950s TV series, and in the 2000 film Hollywoodland, Ben Affleck dramatized a real life incident that happened to George Reeves at a live show in it was terrifying. Can I shoot you? Kenneth? Why would you want to do something like that? So the bullet bounces off. Can I? Well, if you did shoot me, 
and the bullet bounced off it. It might accidentally hit someone else. We don't want that to happen, do we? No. So I think that James Gunn gets that there is a deeper legacy to Superman's history than the most fervent recent generation of fans claim is the only way to do it. For what it's worth, David Cornswit, like Chris Reeve, also trained at Juilliard. The fact that they are looking at him at all, I think tells us that Gunn wants a Superman who's more of a throwback Boy Scout struggling to fit into an otherwise cynical world. I wanna hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Subscribe to our new channels, The Deep Dive and The Break Room. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.